welcome back to the Heavenly Homestead. Today, I'm going to show you some of the good news and the bad news in the farm. And again, I was kicking myself because of what happened in the bad news part. But um, so much so that I was losing sleep. Like I was waking up at 3 in the morning with the rain and thinking, okay, this is going to be ruined. And this was kind of my highlight of the month. And now it's going to be my pit of the month because it just didn't work out. The bad news is that, look at that. It rained, and I don't know if you can see it, but you see that white? I mean, it's been out now for days because when the, the day we were moving it, we realized that it was all moldy. Let me see if I can show you. It's hard to show you, but... And the bad news is that we're having to use all this hay as mulch. Rain unexpectedly for two days. And at that point... <sighs> got it wet enough. I mean, it's very easily spotted. Let me see here. And I'm making a point to show you because I want you to know what it looks like. You can see it from the outside and you can smell it. It smells like mold. <laughs> and I'm sure you do know how mold smells, see? So the moral of the story is, I guess, be ready. You know, um, we had the best intentions to get things done but the roofing was not here on time. We had to go pick it up um, kind of far away from us, about 70 miles from us. So of course that had to happen over the weekend. Things got late and as you can probably tell, the weather is the weather and it will happen whenever it will happen. It really has nothing to do with you know, when you think it's gonna rain. When it's gonna rain, it's gonna rain. And, and that's something I've learned, so. <laughs> they are trying to console me and say, it will be okay. okay. We were young, I know it'll be we okay. Were free and <sighs> I mean, Never even if you're having a hard day, you can always count Every on them. They will tell you, nobody's gonna die. We Worse things happen in this I know, I know. Worst thing happened. Miss Bree. But I was hoping this didn't happen. And the good news is that the extension for the hay area, it's done. Let me bring some light so you can see. Because this is on the west side of the building. So it's kind of hard to see. So we're gonna try to do this with that line over there. So this is the hay that we have right at the second. Uh, we left it kind of like that, so there's good ventilation. And as you can see, it's, you know, just a continuation of the goat house. Now, we are just using this area in this corner right now because we're gonna try and see just to make sure there's no you know, any kind of rain coming in although that part over there as you can see that's kind of an overhang so we can keep all the rain outside so right now we also put here the milk stand it's kind of so hard to show you but it's been so dark and gloomy and despite the sun shining over there which is the west doesn't reach here anymore because of the trees and i knew that that's why i didn't want the milking area back here 
you know as a final destination because um, on the other side where the milking area is gonna be there's more light and I feel like it's it's going to be better over here I think it's perfect for the hay keeps it away dry and still with ventilation but we ended up doing just the this 12 inch wood everywhere everything it was recycled the only thing we bought are those plywood this plywood up here it was very inexpensive because it's very thin and we bought the roofing which is the same that we use for this side over here so i am going to set this up for milking and i think i'm gonna move it right now it's not set up because i'm not gonna milk right now but i think i'm gonna move this over there and kind of put my little searing sitting area on this side but you know it's just it's not huge but this is a really good area as we work on the milking room now for the outside we did this thing over here there's another one down here and again I show you from this other side and we have another board that is not connected over there because it really it already has an, another one but this one will be used for something different see I have another post that that's gonna be for the milking room that it's gonna go right there so you can see there's a lot more light over there and that's why I like it for a milking room now eventually this goat house it's gonna be a lot bigger because we're gonna finish the milking room area and then in this area right here we're gonna put another post and we are gonna turn it into like a covered patio for them or we even are thinking to do it into to make it into some stalls out here in the end this goat house is gonna be way bigger than anticipated but that's what happens anyways <laughs> These twins are just so sweet. And they're always together. Look what I have here. Hello. Hello, Miss Adi. Hello, Mama. Hello, sweetness. Come here. So I'm going to be checking the twins. I'm going to check their weights tomorrow and now that I have an area where I can do it without everyone else trying to get in my way, I'm going to check this other, well thanks for the hug, <laughs> thanks for the hug, got her paws over there, <laughs> or I guess hooves. <laughs> But uh, I'm also going to check Hathine. Um, she is almost there. Ah, she was almost there. I'm pretty sure she is ready to be bred too. But I need to check them for... I need to do their final Famacha score. And do their copper as well. So that is one of the things that I will be doing. This is going to be like the new generation of girls. That are going to be... <laughs> having babies in 2023 which I can't wait to um, see them as mamas because up until this point they're all my babies <laughs> and then they're gonna stop being my babies and they're gonna end up with their own babies right this little girl has the most amazing teeth length I've ever seen in a doe of her age like right now I, she won't let me show you because she's a little shy like her dad but um i will show you tomorrow when i put her on the stand she is very wide for her age 
and I mean you, you can you're supposed to find the thurls here and I mean look my hand is touching this is how wide she is which is very important her weight is also very important before we breed her and one of the other things that is important is that you know she is good to go as far as her FAMACHA score which means that she doesn't have any kind of um, or that she's not fighting any kind of worms or that she has a heavy worm load I mean she needs her uh, hoops trimmed she needs her copper it's gonna be the first time she's gonna get her copper and all the things that she needs to do before turning into a mom and you're probably thinking, uh, why did you wait so long for the twins? To... <laughs> because you're a spoiled brat and I want you to be a mother. So you stop being a spoiled brat. <laughs> Come here, give me a kiss. So you're probably wondering why I'm going to breed Athene, who is only seven months old and I didn't breed these girls before that are now a year old and it has nothing to do with their genetics or if there's something wrong with them but it's also because they were born August 1st of last year and now oh, they're one year old and it's the next fall so when they are born during the summer it is impossible to breed them in the fall but if like Athene they are born around February, chances are that if they're big enough, they will be able to be bred by then. But I have to say one thing about Athene that I cannot say about the twins. Uh, the twins were very slow to develop. Um, they, it took them longer to get to a width that I was more comfortable. Then all of a sudden they developed that width and now it's like I can barely reach thorough to thorough. I'm still gonna measure it and everything, but it's just a different thing. It's completely different. Their bodies are different. Their teeth are different. Their mothers are different. Despite coming from, you know, the same line, Athene was very tiny when she was born. Hi. She was very tiny when she was born, but she caught up to everyone and now she's in a weird age she's only seven months old but she is in that I don't know her body structure is way better than their body structure when they oh, I'm sorry am I saying bad things about you and you just want to kiss me to death well thank you oh please don't eat my hair but the twins when they were her age so it was August September October November December January February, March. No, they were nowhere, nowhere near looking the way that Athene does today. Now, it could be because they're slowing, they're very slow to mature, and Athene is not. It could be because, you know, they have different fathers. So even though Mocha, their mom, is Clara's daughter, you know, they have a different father. Mocha was bred before I purchased her. So she was bred to the back that the farm owned at the time. And interesting enough, Rocky is a um, half brother with the twins. That's why I will not breed them to Rocky because they share a dad so I can't really do any kind of mixing so they are from the same lines on the mom's side same line on the dad's side but not directly you know Rocky's not their dad it's a half brother so that could have a lot to do with the way that she looks a thin looks compared to the twins I mean, it's a strong possibility. I don't know, but it's easier to notice a difference between a very, like, fast to mature goat to a slow to mature goat and body structure and what you're looking for in to have in your herd or what you don't want to have in your herd. That's my husband's home. So. Thank you so much for being here today, guys. I truly appreciate your support. Please don't leave without liking the video and leaving a comment. If you're new around here, subscribe. 
breeding season is upon us. Talk to you guys next.